pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, roll call, please. Note for the record that all council members are present. Okay, duly noted. All right, adoption of the agenda. Any uh, additions, changes? We've got a motion. Do I have a second? No second? Could I ask a question? Sure. Um, I know that uh, Terry had a request about thinking about additional meetings and so forth if we don't have enough time. How do we want to address that regarding the agenda, if at all? We will when we get to that point. <laughs> Is that how you want to do it? it yeah. If we don't, if we don't make it through it, uh, you know, I mean, I, I have an idea, but uh, well, let's see how we go. Okay. Let's see how it goes. All right. Second. All right. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? All right. We've got an operating menu. Uh, first thing up is oral communications, and I have one from Dana Delworth, which is uh, consent calendar D. Is that, oh, you want to do on uh, oral, you want to do it on... Want me to pull D off for you? Is that it? Um, I can tell you my problems in oral communications, and you can make that choice or not. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. And I don't mean to be snippy, but um, anyway, I am asking um, what you are discussing under real property negotiations. Um, I don't know if you made any comment coming out of the meeting, but who are you having negotiations with? Okay. Um, um, city Attorney, you want to respond to that? Uh, matter of fact, uh, we had a uh, closed session, so do you want to report from that closed session? Th there was a real property negotiation in closed session. Uh, direction was given, no action was taken. It had to do with APN numbers 007-556-010 through uh, 007-560-140. The city negotiator is the city manager, and that would be the report out from closed session. Okay. No, it's not. Um, yes, it is. <laughs> well, Okay. <laughs> Um, this is publicly owned property. Mm -hmm. It's, it's not, owned. Is it? Oh, yeah, this part is, yeah. It's publicly owned property. It's owned by the Brisbane Housing Authority. Right. There is nothing on this list that indicates that the Brisbane Power, uh, uh, Housing Authority is involved in this negotiations. And for that reason, I would love to know, have records of the Brisbane Housing Authority. And I want to know, is there an advocate for the public in attendance of these meetings? And is there an advocate for the environment for these negotiations? The lands were purchased by redevelopment money, which is public trust. It was money taken away from my profession, which is schools. So I want to know how that money, out of the years that schools have um, had so little to work on that it gets spent well and it gets spent in the public's interest. It's also part of the Brisbane Acres. It is sacred land and as David Schooley would say, with all the housing element work being done in study session only with no public comment for review, do you know what's going on in this town? Are you promising something to someone or to some company that you can't deliver. Um, so I question whether this is properly noticed because I don't see housing authority on it. And based on past experience with the she uh, Shem Key Bakery public land sale, you will continue to take direction, which I hear that's the comment. You've given direction, but we have no idea what that direction is. Um, and then we come forward with a totally ready-made plan. I was very upset when I observed the city employees during the Shen Key hearing 
lying that the land had not been proposed, the land that you were uh, pulling aside, had not been proposed for a parking lot. Although there was one employee who tried to correct the matter, it was just one too many times that I've observed city employees having knowledge of proposals that haven't even gone before the Planning Commission or any other interested bodies. So, you know, I want to know what's going on with the public land, with my land, with our land, with our collective land. Um, after that last meeting, I realized that what could have been done differently is have an independent property evaluation of that. Because you only got $350,000. That's equivalent to a buildable 2,500-square-foot um, lot here in Brisbane. And we should have gotten more for that. And shame on you for pitting the environmentalists against the recreation uh, and parks people to then come up with some plan to divvy up the money. Shame on you. I want to know what's up. The public has the right to know what's up. And um, let us know. Okay. I think this is abominable, and if you're not going to take the sustainability, draft sustainability plan off the consent calendar, I'd like to speak now. I'll take it off. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you for hearing. Okay. Bye. City Attorney, any, any further comment on that? No comment at this time. Okay. All right. Anybody else for oral communications? Michelle? Michelle Salmon, Brisbane resident. Um, pretty much what Dana said. I feel like as a member of the public, my trust was violated with the sale of the property up by the Shinkei Bakery. Supposedly, it was for economic development, but they pay virtually no sales tax whatsoever, and then the increase in their property tax is nominal. I feel that we made a deal to... Um, I don't know, garner political favor or whatever from them because I don't see any economic uh, advantage or sustainability or benefit to the people of Brisbane worthy of trading public land and public access to the mountain. And because of that distrust, I looked up on the, uh, I called City Hall and I said, can you please tell me what these three parcels are? Yeah, put the five minutes on. No, 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 no. I'm, I'm, my pen ran out of ink. I just, Here, I'm, you can no, 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 no. Sherry, can you give me another <laughs> pen? <laughs> okay. I'm just trying so to So because of that, I'm listening. because of that violation of trust of which I am still so bitter and angry over that I felt was really unjust and wrong and that you weren't even going to have a public hearing about it, you were just going to vote on it. Um, I looked I asked the city to send me what these three parcels were. I was very surprised to find out they were parcels that we were already that we already owned as an entity. And so I'm wondering what kind of property negotiations you're doing with property that we already own. And that concerns me. I understand when you're negotiating to buy a piece of property that you might need to do that behind closed doors. But the public owns this property just like they own the property up at the bakery. And that should not be behind closed doors. I'm sorry. That was just wrong. And I'm very concerned about this. I want to know what's going on. I want to know what's the deal on the table. And I don't want it to be a done deal on some consent calendar by the time it comes here for your vote. I want the people to have time to understand it, to weigh in on it, and to speak on it, whatever this little thing is that's going on that, that's so secret that you won't tell us, except I know what the three parcels are that you've listed on the closed agenda. I'm very upset about that. And so I, I hope that you do let the public know what the situation is before it's a done deal so that we have time to weigh in and, and say how we feel about what you're doing with land that belongs to the public. I'm, I'm really tired of this kind of behind closed doors things uh, on all hush hush. And on this same kind of, uh, while, I'm, while I'm complaining about things, I noticed that all over town, thank you for picking up the litter on the entrance to Old County Road. Um, finally, and I noticed a lot of weed whacking going on everywhere in, in preparation for the fire thing, and not a damn thing has been done on Tunnel Road. 
It is a disgrace. It's a nightmare. It's a danger. People can't ride bicycles along there. The weeds are encroaching on the roadway. There's no safe place to pull over. And now that they've increased the traffic with the paratransit people, they did not do as they promised. I was at that hearing. They said, oh, we'll clean up Tunnel Road and we'll make it more visible because we'll have all this extra traffic and there'll be people here. They have done nothing, nothing to that. And the other day, I'm driving to Tunnel Road on my way to work, and somebody was too impatient and went whipping around somebody else. There's no place for the oncoming car to pull over. And there was almost a head-on collision on Tunnel Road at 7 and 7.30 in the morning. It's not safe. And I think it's up to the city, since we've contracted to use that road, to make it safe. At least bring it up to the same cleanliness standards and weed abatement standards as the rest of Brisbane. Having almost died on Tunnel Road from a head-on collision, I know the dangers of that road. And if there had not been any place for me to at least get halfway out of that guy's way, I would be dead. Some people would probably appreciate that, but I wouldn't. Thank you. Thanks, Michelle. Can we have staff look into that? On Tunnel Road, please. Okay. Anybody else wish to speak? Carolyn, come on. Not surprisingly, I also went to City Hall and asked to look at the four parcels. Um, I wanted to say that uh, I assume it has something to do with the a change from well, its assumption between a redevelopment to the other agency. I forget what it's called, but um, if uh, I would request that um, the public be notified um, about what the plans are for this property, and also that it be sent to Open Space and Ecology to look at. Um, you know, if uh, if indeed there is some plan, I I just assumed it was going to be switched over to you know between the agencies but you know that's just an assumption thank you very much anybody else wish to speak under oral communications okay we'll move on uh first item up uh, is under new business which is item a and the reason we have that moved up is we have a lot of kids here tonight so um, want to consider awarding the design contract for the community skate park to Spawn Ranch Skate Parks and authorize the mayor to sign the agreement on behalf of the city. And staff report, please. Good evening, Mayor, Council Members. Um, at the budget hearings last year, the City Council directed the Parks and Rec Commission to put together a plan of action for a design, developing a new skateboard park. Um, in November, the Park and Rec Teen Services Commission Subcommittee met with members of the public, gathered the requested information, and moved ahead. In December, the council actually approved the process to develop a skateboard park. The first step was a request for proposals. That request for proposals was prepared and approved. It went was advertised and went out to nine skateboard, skateboard park design firms. There were four responses. Uh, a selection committee was put together consisting of the Parks and Recreation Facility Subcommittee, excuse me, the Parks and Recreation Teen Services Subcommittee, the Council Facility Subcommittee, three staff members, myself from Public Works, the City Manager, and Steve Beatty from the Parks and Recreation Department, and one member of the public, Michael Barnes. And of those four proposals, um, those eight committee members unanimously chose Spawn Ranch. Their proposal was the most thorough, the most detailed. They showed the most experience, and um, they just were the most professional. So staff is requesting that you approve the contract and the scope of work that they proposed. Staff is asking for a total budget of $30,000, expecting that the entire design would cost no more than that. We're going to need beyond Spawn, Ranch, Spawn Ranch's $14,000. We're going to need to do a geotechnical report and a topographic and property boundary survey when we get to the actual construction documents phase. And there's a little bit of contingency in there in case we need additional community meetings or any other 
unanticipated work. Um, I'm happy to answer any questions. Okay, council questions. Uh, yeah. I have a question. Go ahead, Clark. So, um, let's see. Um, with Spawn Ranch, they, they were also the, they came with the most competitive bid as well, didn't they? They actually, yes, were the lowest price. Okay. Yeah, I know, I thought they, uh, I, I read the, the proposals and I thought they had the most professional as well. I uh, think you guys did a great job uh, working with the Park and Rec subcommittee on, on um, choosing the, the most appropriate uh, uh, firm. Um, but yeah, I'll, I'll make comments later. But yeah, that, that's, that's the only question I have for staff. Okay. Anybody else? Lori, Terry, any questions? I don't have any staff questions. I'll have comments after we hear from the public. Okay. Uh, I have one slip. Oh, oh go ahead. I have questions. I... Oh, okay, go ahead. Um, so I, I had sent um, staff some questions and received answers to, to all of them, so it was very helpful. Um, but I, some additional questions I had were, um, do we know what the estimate might be for constructing a skate park? Do we have any sense of that at this time? Um, I don't believe we have any more sense than we did when we considered this project as a concept and Stuart Schillinger was overseeing it at the time and he said that the numbers, ballpark numbers were 150 to $200,000, but we're asking for, as I put in the staff report, two phases. The first phase is the conceptual design that the community is going to be involved in and at that time when we come up with a conceptual design and the Park and Rec subcommittee looks at it and makes a recommendation to council, we will have a, a planning level estimate of what that would cost. Then when we, if a concept plan is adopted and then we go to construction documents, there will be three phases that where they will turn in construction documents to staff and in each of those phases they will refine that estimate. But I'd be just throwing a number out in the air if I told you I thought I knew what it would cost. Okay. And um, in terms of fundraising, because I'm assuming there would be fundraising involved, would, would staff um, be able to research any grants or subsidies or fundraising mechanisms? And do we know if this company would, I, I saw from their website that they do sometimes help um, communities find fundraising mechanisms? Is that something that we think that they would be able to help us with or would we do that on our own? That's a great question. I don't, we haven't specifically asked them that, although they, they did talk about creative financing and phasing the project if, if needed due to funds. They probably, I would expect that they would have some knowledge of that. Um, on staff, we, we are, we have a subscription service to a company that um, forwards us grant information for any potential applicable grants. So there are ways to kind of know what's what's out there related to skate parks or recreation facilities. So there are some resources, yes. Okay. And, you know, I, I read the materials. You know, it, lo it looks great from, you know, from the, the perspective of, you know, they definitely s give a, a good sale for what they, what they offer. But um, have we checked their references? They had, I noticed, like, several cities and with contact information, have we sort of done our due diligence and checked to make sure other cities have been happy with their product? When, when they were the unanimous choice, we didn't actually speak to other cities. Um, kind of, I, I guess at this point, we've taken them at their word. We can certainly follow up and, and make sure that agencies are happy. And I know that a couple of people had experience with other skate parks that they built and were satisfied with those, very happy with those. Thank you. And I think all my other questions have been answered and I'll reserve my comments. Thank you. Okay. All right. Thanks, Lori. You don't have any questions. You do. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> yeah. Um, the timeline in the Spone proposal is obviously out of date now. And yet that's incorporated in the, in the contract. So how do we deal with that? They're, they're required to update the uh, schedule as the project progresses. At, at this point, they, their schedules seem pretty ambitious and there are certain 
parts of this process that are outside of their control, that being that when a conceptual design, well, if, if we only take two community meetings, then that might be sort of predictable, but when a conceptual design is agreed upon, then within the city we need to develop a funding plan and then council needs to approve the next step. So it would have been hard for them to predict that timeline. So at this point, I thought, just leave their very optimistic we're already behind schedule schedule out there, but they're still required to, to keep staff up to date on what the timeline is. I think they're quite ambitious, though. It, it still leaves the question unanswered, because um, they did propose a timeline, and it, it seems as if that's, of course, unrealistic. So are we going to redo it, or, or are we going to take a new timeline in reference to some of the uncertainties you mentioned or, or how we're going to deal with it? Well, I, I we would have ask sort of a contractual relationship. If you put something in there that's not real, then, then it becomes a problem for implementation, it would seem to me. Well, up, upon approval, we would plan to hold the kickoff meeting. That was the first step, and staff will ask them for an updated timeline and at that time be able to give them the input in terms of our expectation of the city element and have them provide a more realistic schedule. Okay. Um, second question, wh where is the money budgeted coming from? The, there's, I'm made to understand, there's $7,000 in a recreation facilities fund that was left over from the community park construction and then the other 23000 that I'm asking for that comprises what I would expect to be the maximum for the design would be from the general fund. Yeah, but, I, but, but is it budgeted? That's my question. It is not budgeted. So this is a request for in addition to the budget then? I guess this is a Stuart question. Yes. So when we were developing the budget back in March and April, we didn't have these numbers at that point in time. So what the anticipation was whatever was going to be approved by the city council would be um, a budget augmentation based on your approval tonight. So we'll just augment the, we'll just put another $23,000 into the budget tonight for this item. So there's no carryover from last year except there, for the 7,000? There's no specific carryover because you did not budget any specific funds. You know, <laughs> as I've said, at other meetings, I anticipate that the fund balance will be higher than what we're showing in the budget um, because we do have a number of different savings. So our fund balance will be higher. So there is additional carryover, but not specifically allocated for this. I mean, if you would like, you could budget it tonight as part of the 13-14 of the budget, and then we would just carry it over into the 14-15. So you wouldn't have to budget for it next year. You, would, you could budget for it tonight in 13, 14, if you would rather. It's no difference from a finance perspective on how you want to say that. Mm -hmm. Okay, but at, at some point, we probably should make some statement about that. Yes. Under, probably under budget discussion. Sure. Yeah, okay. Is it? Okay. I, yeah, I have a follow-up. Okay, go ahead. Mm -hmm. uh, so um, I know that we didn't earmark the money for skate park um, in the budget but we do have teen services money that we did allocate. So last year we allocated how much, Stuart? Sorry to, to you know, kind of put that out there on you, but um, if you could. Amazingly enough, I'm carrying my budget with me tonight. I, I figured you'd be able to access those. So numbers. last year we budgeted, so that's not actually last year. So we're still in this year. year. That's right, so 13-14. I keep forgetting that because I'm so far in the budget. So in 13-14, we budgeted $134,000 in the teen uh, service activities area. You know, I know we're not going to be spending that much because we did not use the services for um, part-time personnel that we had anticipated, which is about, you know, a little over 42000 And we also had budgeted $20,000 in this 
current year budget for teen activities. We haven't spent all that because we were working with the library. So I would anticipate within the teen activities budget, we would have about $60,000 that at the end of, come June 30th, will not be spent, so it will fall into fund balance. So you could either allocate the $23,000 out of this year's teen activities, yes. or teen, yeah, teen activities budget, or you can say that we'll allocate an additional $23,000 out of next year's, and it will have no real impact on the bottom line finances of the city one way or the other. It's just a matter of how you, you know, how you want to allocate the funds. Okay. All right. Thank you for that information. So that was the only other question. Okay. <clears throat> it, um, okay. I know a lot of folks want to talk on this, but I have one slip. And uh, Dana Dilworth, I think you wanted to, you wanted to talk on this. I, it says possible and my question is similar in that it's budget related and um, would ask about priorities that um, you know this chunk of money that you're now providing for a um, a recreational use that in some degrees is seasonal because it's kind of tough to do it in rain and things like that it's dedicated to a particular age range of people not everybody will not serve everybody in town so my question is how much of this money can go toward fixing up the teen center which is degrading and not being used and once again here's another public resource that's being wasted will squander away for some other reason my question is about the priorities of spending the money. Thank you. Okay. Anybody else wish to speak on the matter? Show. Come on forward. Just give us give us your name for the record. Um, uh, I'm Sean Hurt. I'm, uh, I'm a Brisbane resident. I've been living in Brisbane for like 15 years now with my grandmother, Dolores Brown. And the skate park to me has been like a good place to hang out and I feel like we could really like benefit from a concrete skate park because it's more durable. And I feel like skateboarding is becoming uh, much more popular nowadays. And if we were to create a skate park, it'd give kids around Brisbane something to do because when I grew up around here, I felt like there wasn't too much to do. It's a small town, you know, there's, can't really do too much, especially if you don't have a car and you're a lot younger. So a skate park would give kids something to do around town, I feel like. And also, uh, like, uh, yeah, the teen center, I don't know. Not too many people use that too much, I feel like. And when I went there, I didn't, I didn't like it too much. But if we had a skate park when I was younger, like a concrete one, I feel like I'd be spending a lot more time there. And, uh, and they'd keep a lot of kids out of trouble, I feel like. So I feel like it'd be a really good idea. So, yeah. Thank you, Sean. Uh, raise your hand, I'll call you. Young man. <laughs> <laughs> Takes later. Hello there. Give, me, give us your name for the record, please. Hello. My name is Nick Stone, and I am speaking Upon regarding the new skate park and I've been living in Brisbane my whole life and I've been skating at that skate park for a very long time and I've, I remember we always hang out there I'm like man we want a new skate park we want to skate always wanting one and for the new generations now I think the kids would just flow into the skate park because when I was skating it, it kept me out of trouble I was active you know I just had a blast you know I my mind was clear I just I felt more social and Really, like, when you skateboard, you, like, you learn to overcome fears, you know, and that teaches a lot, like, in the inside, like, getting a job or just in school, you know, staying focused, like, having this, like, on this slip right here, it says having self-motivation. In the skate park right now, it's rough, and kids will tend to skate inside the basketball courts, which gets in the way of the basketball players, so I think having a new skate park will be very beneficial to the kids in Brisbane and to kids in other cities, and we could, you know, have a contest too. 
you know, have a contest, people and barbecue can actually bring in money, like f refund the money we spent, you know? I think it'd be really good. Thank you. Thank you, Nick. <laughs> um, let's give us your name for the record. Uh, my name's Colin Denmark. I'm a Brisbane resident. Uh, I'm not a youth. I do skate. I have given myself plenty of bruises down there on the ramp. Few reasons. I'm not the best skater because I'm not a youth, but also the ramp. It does hinder a lot of skating. I've damaged wheels, taken skin off on screws sticking out of the ramp. Uh, on the kids' side of, side of it, it seems like the youth are always overlooked. Yeah, the, we, we've got a building we can go hang out in. You know, we could give it a paint job and we could give it more money, but we want to try something new. If no one's hanging out there, what's the point? Let's put something in where kids... I used to work in a log shop where we had a skate ramp. Kids would come from Santa Cruz on rainy days and had a roof. It's the only place they could skate on a rainy day. Kids would come from Sacramento. They would come from all over to a skate park. Same as Menlo Park, Pacifica. They have skate camps going every day of the week. This week, next week, the week after, the week after. Kids from 5 to 18 years of age all wanting to learn to skate and they love it. I don't see why not. Economically, the shops will love it here. It, it's, it's a no-brainer. I don't see why not. You've got the money. Let's allocate it for something fun, something kids want to do. These guys all want it. So I'm, I'm not a youth. I want it. You guys should try skating one time. Maybe you guys will love it too. <laughs> so, yeah, thanks. Thanks for the invite, Colin. <laughs> Hi, I'm Nancy Denmark. I'm a Brisbane resident, and I am not a skater either, but I totally support having a safe place for the kids to go. They learn responsibility. They can be social. And if we have the money allocated for teen services, I think this is a great way to utilize that money. Thanks. Thank you, Nancy. Got right here. Hi, I'm Sergio Perez from uh, Pacifica. I'm not a Brisbane resident, but uh, he he summed it up. I think a uh, skate park would really benefit Brisbane in a big way. I come here a lot, and um, seeing that, seeing like that open space, it would just be better to have a skate park there as well. I think um, I think just living in Pacifica, the skate park there just brings in people from a lot of places, bringing people together and like you you wouldn't get bored as usually as you would. So I believe it would benefit Brisbane and an outside opinion would help as well. Thank you. Thank you, Sergio. Mm. Any in the back? Don? Just raise your hand, I'll call on you and I wish to speak, so. Hello, I'm Dawn David. I'm a Brisbane resident. Um, I think the skate park is really important, and I commend all you guys for being here. And it's given my young children, who are five and eight, a sense of um, being safe in Brisbane. My little five-year-old knows all these boys and my daughter, and they see him around town, and it gives him, he feels good when they say hi, and they know him from the skate park. He had a birthday party at the skate park, and he donated, asked for donations to for the skate park. I, I don't remember the amount that he raised, but he was big enough to donate his money to the skate park funds and um, we had a pro skater come out by the name of Sean Connolly and he gave a, a quick um, analysis I guess of how the skate park is not the best place and he has a skate program in the city of San Francisco which is thriving and what he does is he takes um, camps from different little places and he actually comes to Brisbane when he has a smaller group and he said that it's it's really dangerous sometimes because of the road isn't flat, but they can do small teachings. There was probably uh, 60 people at Cameron's birthday party, and it was all people from town. It was parents. The dads got up there, and he taught the whole class. Um, to talk about the teen center and money being wasted, I am on the board of the Friends of the Brisbane Library, and I think that we can have teens come out there and the library is such a cool place to hang out 
and I think that would be like a dual purpose of the teen center and the library with the new back area. It's, I think it's a cool place to hang out. Um, and there's funds there. So exercising, it's keeping the kids um, focused. It takes a lot of focusing to s try to skateboard. It's hard. I try to do it with my kids, and um, sometimes I fall, but that's okay. <laughs> but, um, yes, so teen sitter, I think that the library would be a great place, like, you know, to hand off with that. Okay. Thank you. Thanks, Don. <clears throat> Next person, you see a hand? Nope. In the back, come on up. Let's give your name for the record, please. Mr. Mayor, um, my name is Carlos Canyas. I've been a Brisbane resident for about a year and a half, but I've been coming to this ramp for over 10 years. And I also work uh, for a skateboarding brand in San Francisco, so I, n I have a lot of experience with, with skateboarding and skateboard parks. And the problem with this park is it's been the same for about 10 years, at least. So there's no dynamic to the park. It's pretty basic. It's deteriorating. It definitely needs a lot of help. And obviously, from all these kids talking, it's going to get a lot of use. And also from old guys like myself and these guys over here so we still skate I skate this ramp and uh, I can tell you that it needs a lot of work already so you you're probably gonna have to put money into the skate park anyway you, you're probably better off getting something new and up-to-date because this this one's pretty old so okay thank you Carlos to say thanks Anyone else? raise your hand okay Jessica, come on up. <coughs> <coughs> I'm sorry, I'm late. I had to put my youngest down. Um, I'm really happy to be here. I'm glad to make it out, and it's been a while since I've addressed you. And Let's give you your name for I'm Jessica Loft. I live in Brisbane. I've lived here about I don't know, 10, 12 years. Who's counting? <laughs> um, I, uh, I love Brisbane. I love living here. And one of the things I love about it is that you guys make things happen. And I've been kind of out of the loop for about a year now, dealing with some personal stuff. And through, through it all, you guys are still here. You're still doing stuff. You're doing the park behind the library. You're making stuff happen at the playground. You're, you're making Brisbane a better place to live. And I, I am so grateful, and I appreciate all of your efforts to do that. Um, so thank you. The skate park is next, right? <laughs> I mean, we came up here in 2011, 2012, all of us excited about the playground. And the playground went in, and it's used every day by all ages, from babies up to I see middle schoolers out there after school, and they're on the swings, and they're flirting and talking and swinging on the swings and having a great time. So. I've seen Ray on the swings a few times. Big kids on the swings. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not just, you know, we thought it might end at 10, 11, 12, but there are middle schoolers and high schoolers hanging out at the park because it's beautiful and it's expanded and it's gorgeous. And the, play, the community park in total is such an attraction. And um, at that point in time, back in, I think it was 2011, it was dedicated in 2012, but back when we were going through all that, <clears throat> we said, you know, let's dedicate the funds to the park and get it expanded and get it awesome and do the slides and do the swings and just build it out, right? And now it's time for the skate park. It's time. So I really hope that you will approve the, um, the money to hire the design team and get this thing going. And I missed all this. I, I'm really sorry I missed it because it sounds like it was really terrific and you heard from a lot of kids who actually use it. Um, my thing is I have three daughters. I don't know if they'll use it or not, but I have friends who will use it. And I don't want my girls hanging out up Quarry Road and out at the train tunnel and outer limits, you know, outside of kind of adult, responsible adult supervision. The skate park is right here. The police department's right there. We all drive by. We see what's going on. And it's a great place for kids to hang out and have um, their kind of teenage hangout, but still kind of be monitored and within eyesight of responsible adults. So so I really hope you'll approve this, and thank you for your leadership and everything you do. I appreciate it. Okay. Thank you, Jessica. Good. Michelle? I'll get you next. Until Larry Durham left, I was going to say there were three people in the room who remembered when Silver Spot was actually the recreation center for Brisbane. And it was heavily used, a great place. 
we had a place. There was a basketball court. There were swings and slides and a rec room, and you could check out balls. And there was stuff for kids to do. And that's gone now as a resource for the general uh, population. And so I, I see the need very clearly, and there's a lot of interest, and in I think that we should move forward with having a skate park. My concerns are that is this space big enough, and is this where it's going to be? Because if it's not, we might be putting the horse before the cart by hiring this designer before we've designated the actual space where it's going to be. Um, I'm concerned that we do design it for dynamic use, uh, uh, that we can change it, every, change it out every couple of years so that it stays fresh and doesn't become stagnant, like the one speaker said. Um, I think that it's important that we look at the real cost long term for building the facility and maintaining the facility because we have a, we have a kind of a history of building things and then not maintaining them very well or starting things and not keeping them up. And a good example is, you know, right now we're doing a, hopefully a major overhaul at the pool but we hadn't done regular maintenance. You mean the, the rust, you see the rust happening. That that didn't need to get rusty. We didn't take care of it. So we get a new toy and we don't take care of it. So we really need to budget long term for taking care of the skate park, making sure it stays safe, making sure that it's cleaned up, not by volunteers necessarily, because volunteers tend to come and go, but that we budget cleaning it up, sweeping up gla grass, glass and grass. And, and if we're going to have a facility that it doesn't become an attractive nuisance, that we really do maintain a safe environment for not just the kids, not just the teens, and not just the adults, but for everyone. And I think that's really important. If you go look now, the all around the skate park is nice and clean because somebody's been keeping it really nice and clean, and I totally appreciate that. But there's weeds growing all around the basketball court, and there was garbage all along Old County Road. So I think that we should, if we're going to do it, do it right. Put your whole heart into it. Make long-range plans for it. Make a space for it. And keep it clean. Because obviously a lot of kids really, really want it. A lot of adults really, really want it. Yeah, it's not going to serve everybody in Brisbane. But there's nothing in Brisbane that serves everybody in Brisbane except the five of you. And hopefully you do serve everyone in Brisbane. So I say you know, go for it, but make sure that you've got all your ducks in a row and that you're not just throwing out money for a design when you don't have a space and and make sure that you clearly articulate what you want because um, we don't need another uh, design fiasco like we had for the original city hall in the, in the community park. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Michelle. <clears throat> Give us your name for the record, please. My name is Dee Molina. I'm a Brisbane resident. I hadn't planned on speaking, <laughs> but um, I'm Josh's mom. And uh, we moved here about three years ago, and I could always find him at the skate park. Um, he has evolved between biking and skateboarding and scootering. Uh, through the three years, he got really good at it, and he developed his crew. <laughs> um, I could always find him at the skate park. Whenever that he was, I thought he'd be at the teen center, he was always at the skate park. Um, I'm a realtor, so I drive around town, and, and as I'm going to, to, to view homes, I come home, and I always know I can find him at the skate park. I pick him up, we go home, and that's home base to us. Uh, so having said that, he's spent a lot of time there. So has his friends. And uh, I think if there's anything that we want to do to improve for the middle schoolers, for the grammar school, um, they're going to end up being there as well. So I, I, I think it's a good idea. Uh -huh. Thank you, Dean. First one in the back. Give us your name for the record, please. I'm Destiny. Um, so I'm a Brisbane resident. I've been living here for a little over four years, but came here since I was a little baby to see family. Personally, I know that my brother, he loves the skate park. He goes there all the time. He's been wanting it to be new and renewed. Like I've seen him practice and practice fall but get back up. 
I know, though, that I don't like to go there because there's not a lot for me to do. Even if I try, I've tried once, but it's like the ramps are always slippery, and I know he's tried to make things better with his friends, but it's not, like, helping out too much. And the teen center, it's not, like, they changed it, but no one still went there. They went a little bit to see because they got computers, like, technology every day is what we all love. But... It'd be good for a place to be outdoors, for them to do something and be active, other than just, like, go to the park and swing. So, yeah. Okay. I'll come back to the repeats after I get everybody one <laughs> one round. First time. Gary Roberts. Uh, sorry. Good evening, Mr. Mayor and City Council. Um, my name is Gary Roberts, and I'm... <laughs> go ahead. <clears throat> and I'm a Brisbane resident. Um, I have ridden a scooter um, and played and hung out at the skate park. There's a second city council meeting I attended. <laughs> and um, I want you guys to improve the skate park because I spent a lot of my time there. Me and my friends always hang out there. And we didn't usually go to the teen center because, you know, it was boring. <laughs> <laughs> I'd have a bit of a joke, but nobody was really there. And yeah, um, please approve the Spawn Ranch uh, for a contract for design of a concrete skate park. Thank you for hearing what I have to say about the skate park. Thank you. David. Good evening, Mr. Mayor and City Council. My name is Josh Bunker, and I'm a Brisbane resident. I have biked, ridden a scooter, and hung out in the Briggs, Brisbane Skate Park, and this is the fourth sitting meeting, city meeting I've attended to. Please improve the Spawn Ranch contract for design and concrete skate park because, I mean, everybody needs it. Thank you. Thank you. David. Good evening. My name's David Primer, and um, I live here in Brisbane. I had a comment for Lori because she asked a question specifically about references um, I actually did meet with uh, the CEO and, and our representative for Spawn Ranch at the Dew Tour um, I believe it was last August yeah somewhere around there and met with the CEO of the Dew Tour, Dew Tour who hired Spawn Ranch to do all their uh, ramps the Dew Tour is a pretty big like a multi-million dollar professional sporting event and like I had a meeting with them and they talked about it and they said how happy they were with them and it was obvious like everybody was super stoked on the ramps all the pros love it I'm sure they're probably gonna be coming back next year so that's one reference I have okay thanks anybody who hasn't spoken yet wish to speak <clears throat> get up there young man <laughs> Give us your name and uh, for the record. Hi, I'm Sean Silva, and I would like a new skate park because I've ridden that skate park for about two and a half years, and I've scraped myself in almost every part of my body because of those deteriorating ramps. I mean, it's a fun place for everybody to hang out and all, but in the end, like the more people that get hurt over it because it's not that safe, it's like a lot of people, and every. <laughs> Everybody uses the skate park a lot, and no one, I haven't seen anybody go to the teen center when I'm going down that hill to get to the skate park, and uh, so it would be more work if you did more work to the skate park than to anywhere else, because, like, everyone that, like, skates or scooters, they get kicked out of other places because the skate park is dangerous, so other people would go into, like, the industrial and ride around over there. Um, just to get fun and do tricks because it's no, there's nothing really much to do at the skate park because it's just plain and basic and that's really all I have to say. Please vote yes. <clears throat> Thanks, Sean. Uh, hi, my name is Malcolm Barnes. Um, I've lived in Brisbane my entire life. Uh, this is my fourth city council meeting on the skate park that I've attended. Um, again, like all of them have said, Please approve the Spawn Ranch contract for the design of a new concrete skate park. It would mean a lot to us, and we'd use it a lot, so thank you. 
Thank you, Malcolm. Okay, anybody else who hasn't spoken yet? Okay, Don, come on up. <clears throat> I forgot to mention the point of my son having the birthday party there was that that was um, it's a good idea to raise money like we rent out the park for people to throw parties there the fact that there was maybe a little over 60 people that's a great place to throw a party and no one there was no one dad got hurt and he scraped his knee <laughs> but out of, out of the 60 people it, it that would be a good way to generate some money okay that was it thank you <clears throat> Anybody else? Renee. Hi, Renee Marmion, um, Brisbane resident. And you know, of course, I'm for the skate park, have been all along. And I also want to let you know that we did get some funds, matching funds, up to about $5,000 from Tony Hawk. So that'll go into, you know, part of this financing. Just wanted to make you aware of that. So I hope you pick the spawn the spawn ranch, and they they do have a a good um, background. They're like you know you know Anderson Windows, they're following E. F. Hutton, Spawn Ranch. Thank you. Hi, my name is Maria Ellen Ang. I have been a you, you want to pull the microphone down? Yeah, there you go. Um, my name is Maria Ellen Ang. I've been a Brisbane resident for 12 years. This is my son right here, Andrew Cuevas. He just turned 10, June 7, and my sister-in-law got him a skateboard. And since June 7, every day he's been at the skate park. Every day he wants to go to the skate park. And so I think it would be nice to have a new skate park because he is 10 and he will keep on doing it. My daughter, I have a daughter who is 12 years old. Yeah, she's 12. And now she wants a skateboard because she's watching her little brother skateboard. So she wants one now too. So I think it is nice to have a new skate park. Okay, thank you. Anybody else? Yeah, I forgot to Show. Sorry, I forgot two things. As we move forward with the skate park, let's not abandon the teen center building. It really is a good community resource. Not everybody's going to skateboard, so I think that we should really kind of refurbish that building. I know that Brisbane Dance Workshop could certainly use places for more classes. They may not even be able to offer Saturday classes if we had access to that space that was in, and made it better. And the other thing is I wanted to remind everybody that this Saturday we're cleaning up Quarry Road and the base of Owl Canyon where there's the ad hoc skate park. There's quite a bit of glass and debris there. We've put a garbage can there now, and I invite all the skateboarders to come and help clean up that area this Saturday and show how clean you can keep um, a, a park and a, a recreation facility and a place to use. And, and how we can have both um, the environment and a skate park. Thank you. Thank That's you at uh, 9 o'clock. There's two meeting places. You can either meet at the beginning of Quarry Road or you can meet up at the base of Al Canyon. There'll be two teams. Back Thank you. Back behind Lippin, right? Mm. Come with lunch and a T-shirt. Josh, come up. <clears throat> give, give your name one more time so we catch it. My name is Josh Bunker. And I just wanted to add that um, there's a lot more kids that want this. Just they're too scared to come talk. And um, <laughs> and also from kids from Millbrae, because we would go and ride Millbrae Skate Park. We like kind of showed them Brisbane, and they would come here almost like daily after school and just ride. So there's a lot more people that use it than just them. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Yeah. Mm. Is your name for the record? Guillermo Roberts. Hi. Um, I remember uh, going to a lot of skate parks, and a lot of skate parks don't allow scooters on the skateboards, and it's kind of messed up, but it happens. And uh, we need a new skate park because I was on that. My friend was on the half pipe, and there was like a hole in the half pipe, and he went like he hit the hole, and he like hit his face. <laughs> 
Yeah, but uh, yeah. Okay. That's all I gotta say. Anybody else speak on the matter? <clears throat> Young man, you want to come up? We won't bite. <laughs> right, go with a peer pressure. All right, all right, sorry. <clears throat> it's okay. I, I've heard you speak before. You, you, I know you want it. And <laughs> How about you, Mr. Cameraman? You want to say? Okay. <clears throat> All right, uh, I'm not hearing any more, so I'm going to bring it back to uh, to the council at this point. So uh, what's the council's pleasure on this? I know you have some more comments, so maybe Cliff will start on your end if you want to. Sure. <coughs> yeah, you know, I, I really like the Spawn Ranch uh, proposal. Um, I like the, one of the things I like about it is the, uh, design workshops that they're that they're planning to do with the community, and uh, you know that might be a good opportunity to, to look at uh, potentially other locations. I think um, you know I, this is uh, an important uh, facet of of our town, and we should do it right. And so uh, I, I'm all in favor of of um, getting the community involved and looking at options. And one of the things that they talk about in their proposal is using Facebook um, as a way to reach out to young folks such as, as you guys and get that uh, feedback. And so um, I think that's great. And then, you know, Dave Primer talked about how he has interacted with them. And I think that's also important, too, because we've, you yeah, know, I mean, as a, as a council member, I'm, I'm not a skater. Um, so I, I look to folks in the community who, um, you know, that, that's an important part of, of their life and um, you know I, I've had uh, a couple of conversations with Dave and uh, he's really uh, enlightened me in, in with the sport of, of skateboarding and so um, I'm you know his, what he has to say is, is you know means a lot to me um, you know uh, the different events that these guys have worked on you know the the do uh, event and in, in some of the other cities where they've created skate parks um, you know, the designs that these guys have done are, are beautiful. And I think, um, you know, it can make uh, a, big, a big impact uh, on the look of our town as, as people come into our city. Um, I, I know there's, that there's been some, some reluctance to, to make it so nice that then you bring in folks from outside. And I, I don't know, I mean, I think the skate community is, is a good community. And, the, and the, you know, it's about... Uh, you know, developing new friendships and, and reaching out to different communities. And I, I think that makes your own community a stronger community. So, um, yeah, so I'm, I'm very much in favor of moving forward uh, with this. Uh, we did talk about the budget and where to, to take the money from, uh, from the budget. Uh, I'm glad that Renee mentioned the, the Tony Hawk. Uh, Tony Hawk, is it? Yeah, the Tony Hawk matching funds of $5,000. So we you know, definitely incorporating that into the uh, these costs. Uh, I would I would recommend uh, taking uh, some of the money that uh, in the staff report was earmarked out of this year's budget, uh, looking at teen activities from the 13-14 budget, and and using those funds because we're still in that budget right now. So. And uh, one last thing, you guys did a great job speaking, and thank you for all the other folks who uh, came out tonight. Uh, not only tonight, but just uh, over the last uh, months and years, uh, wanting to have this be uh, an important part of our of our city. So thank you. Okay, Terry. I want to thank everybody for coming out and showing how popular this is. Um, I do have some concerns. Um, we don't have a location picked unless we're going to demolish the current and put it in the current location. So I think that doing the engineering work is jumping ahead of where we need to be if we don't know what we're engineering or what our budget really is. Um, I think the Tony Hawk funds are only for a build, not for design. Oh, okay. So, okay, sure. So, sorry. Um, and so those funds are not available for the process we're in right now. Um, 
I have, we are trying to paint a really rosy picture of our budget and that we have money, so let's spend money. And we don't. We are not going into a positive budget. We're going to be in a negative budget if we pass the budget the way it looks right now. And so I'm very concerned that we're, we're spending money when we haven't budgeted to actually build the thing or know where we're going to build it. And so I, I am in favor of look, getting a design, finding out what the real on-the-ground costs are. I cannot believe that these people have built many parks for many different cities and don't know how much it's going to cost or can't say it's 100000 200000 500000 And I think that before we go ahead and spend engineering money, we need to really know what our concept is and what we're looking at spending and whether we really can afford it. Right now, there's things we are putting off that have nothing to do with recreation, their infrastructure. They're not pretty and glossy things. There's benefits we aren't paying and we're going to debt for. And I think that a skate park may be a good use for it, but I think we really need to go in eyes wide open and know how much we are looking at spending. So if it were to me, I would say that we should go ahead with the design thought process and the, you know, getting a real on the ground look at what it's going to cost to have a state of the art facility and see if we can really truly afford it. Okay. Oh, I'm going to add one more thing okay. quickly. Um, I think that we still have issues with age groups that can use a skate park with immunity um, under state law. So under 12 are not included in usage at skate parks. And that's still a concern for me because I know there's a lot of kids that are in that under 12 group that would like to use it. And so designing it for a variety of age groups would be the legality of designing for, young, for all age groups is a concern. And that's it for me. Okay. Ray? So I was a part of the subcommittee that recommended this, so obviously it's clear where I'm coming from. Um, I, I did want to mention uh, a couple of things in response to some of the observations. Um, first of all, we had four proposals uh, from all very legitimate firms who have done skate parks all over the world. So. Um, a lot of people were sort of implying that the other firms weren't as professional as Spoon. I, I, that I don't think is a fair comparison. I think all of the firms were really top notch. And I think we were quite pleased to get proposals from uh, a variety of firms that have built skate parks everywhere in the world. And so when we recommended Spoon March, uh, Spoon Ranch, <laughs> Uh, unanimously, clearly we're saying that of the bunch, they were the, they were the best. And, and we followed a, a scoring method in which we identified different dimensions and everybody gave scores and the whole committee that was mentioned earlier, uh, you know, they submitted their scoring sheets and so it was done in a reasonably objective manner. And, and we all agreed that the Spone Ranch had the most interesting proposal and they seemed to have the most innovative approaches and we like the way they incorporated public art and uh, they certainly have a international reputation as uh, Mr. Primers pointed out uh, and it's uh, also the case that they they build skate parks. Uh, their bid was uh, quite a bit lower than some of the others. The Spone Ranch bid is $14,000 which is what I presume we're about to approve one of the others bid was $36,000, so quite a bit more. Um, and so my speculation, just personal speculation, is that Spone Ranch is hoping that by getting the design, they will also get to be able to build it. So I think it's kind of uh, 
their hope anyway, and we'll see whether that happens. I think it's also uh, noteworthy that what uh, Council Member O'Connell was talking about, namely, you know, moving a step at a, at a time, is exactly the way this is set up. Uh, we are having uh, meetings with them. Uh, we will look at, uh, you know, the location. Uh, there's four different design possibilities for, for that location, the current location. Um, when, when we see the concept, we'll get a look at it. We'll see whether that's what we want. The community, all these guys out there, if they want to, you know, come to the meetings and have a look at it and have a say, I mean, that's great. That's the way it's set up. Uh, and then there, it's, it's their responsibility to give us some sense. Okay, if you want this kind of a skate park and it's designed this way and you have all these features, this is what's going to cost you. And then we'll have to decide all right, is that what we want and is that what we're able to afford and so forth? And, and we'll make that decision at that point. Uh, we haven't uh, got there yet, and that's the reason we're doing it in the step-by-step -step process. Because even as we said at the subcommittee level, they come in, well, if you want this, that'll cost you a million dollars. And we'll, uh, sorry, you know, can't do that. Uh, so then go back to the drawing board. So what the, we, we've got that kind of built into the process, and I hope it works. But anyway, that's the way we're approaching it. And we uh, have a belief that the public hearing process, the open process, we may even want to add some more if people have a lot more to say about it. Because, you know, you guys are the experts on skate parks. You know, we don't know very much about skate parks. Uh, we, we ultimately have to approve it, but you are going to have to tell us, okay, these features make sense, and then we're going to say, okay, that's very nice, but that's a little too expensive. Can we do it that, that, <laughs> that's at a little lower expense, uh, but that will still satisfy the kinds of things that you need to make a good skate park experience. So I think that's kind of what we have in mind, and I look forward to the, the process of, you know, really going carefully through with this company, the ideas, the concepts, and then eventually uh, the, the building of the skate park. As, as a follow-up, mm -hmm. so you believe that besides the bid that was given by Spawn Ranch, we need to do the additional funding for geotechnical at this time? I think the answer to that, as I understood, the only conversation we had at the subcommittee level, and uh, we'll see what uh, others who are on the committee, clerks on the committee, and of course several staff members. So, um, we didn't specify how much geotechnical work is required to be done, so we really don't know. And I think that's another one of the things that we're going to find out from uh, Spawn Ranch. Um, if we stick with the current location, which I think is the most likely. Um, then the question becomes, you know, how much geotechnical work do we need to do? And then that will determine, you know, how much money we need to spend. It, it may not be as much as there is being suggested here. I mean, this is just a ballpark. I mean, we don't really know. Uh, I, th I think it's a fair statement. I will defer to the engineers, but isn't that sort of where we're at? Mr. Mayor, if I may. So so I think where we're at on this is when staff put together this RFP and when we brought this proposed contract to you, we are operating under the assumption that, that at the end of this process that includes this, there's going to be a final design. Right. And so for us to get to a final design, we're going to need to do some geotechnical work right. and we're going to need to do some baseline surveying. surveying. I, I believe it's in your package where we've shown you before the very many steps that we we're going to right. go through before you approve a final design concept. Right. So it's not until after that final design concept is approved right. that we would then use those funds for geotechnical and survey right. at, at the final selected site with the final selected layout. Right. Right. I'm not sure if that helps or not. Yeah, that helps. No, but, but she was also asking about how, how do you really know, you know, how much? And, that, and I said it depends on the design and it depends on what is – the case with the property we're looking at and, you know, how much geotechnical is required. And, and that's going to vary in cost, of course. You're, you're correct, sir. And again, what we've done throughout this is that we believe that we've, we've been given some guidance as to what the council's appetite is for a final budget. And we've tried to provide that guidance to a designer 
but at the same time, not completely restrict him to it, not completely restrain what it is that he's trying to come up with. So based on that understanding of that $150,000 to $200,000 number, the associated dollar amounts for the geotechnical and the survey is what we think would be necessary for a project that's going to come out of that. That address it, Terry. Um, well, it gives me an idea that we're talking about a hundred and fifty to two hundred thousand dollar project, in addition to this budget for a possible build out, plus whatever bells and whistles, add-ons and options we want to add, um, or are encouraged to add to make it more special. So um, that does answer that question. I think that um, I still have concerns about age groups and, and the safety issues that go along with a, with a skate park. Um, but again, those are something we really don't know until we have a design and a, and a concept of what is going to need to be done there. Um, and so I, I just would be more comfortable with doing the project through the design um, where we get specifications where we can to, can do a approximate build cost rather than add in extra money where the expectation is, well, now we put so much towards this project, we have no choice but to build it, whether we can afford it or not. So <clears throat> that's, that's my concern. Mr. Mayor, could I just um, at some point in this process, we're going to have to come back to the council and have a discussion and, and actually confirm a location. And at that point in time, and I'll let the engineers jump in here if I don't have this right, at that point in time, then it would be appropriate to do the geotech and surveying work. So if you're more comfortable tonight just saying go forward with the $14,000 for spawn and then we'll come back to you later for the geotech budget and surveying budget once we're at a point where we've got a location tied down, which you will do as a council, we could do it that way. My boss is a brilliant gu guy. I completely <laughs> agree with that. <laughs> That's fine with us, sir. Okay. <laughs> It still doesn't address your overall concern, right? <laughs> no, it, it, it addresses a lot of my concerns. Okay. I, I don't have a problem with looking at what it really will cost us and to, and to get a good idea of what it costs us as a community to provide this benefit. I mean, I think it's, it's a benefit that a lot of people would enjoy and a lot of people wouldn't. But I think we need to know what that cost and what the benefit is and whether it's worth it to us and whether we can afford it. So that's okay. my concerns. Right. Ray, are you finished? I'm finished. Okay, Lori. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, so first to follow up on what Terry mentioned about the, the geotechnical works, I had asked staff, one of the questions I asked was how much that would cost for the survey and map and the geotechnical report. And the response I got was it would be about five to $6,000 for each of those items, is that right? Yeah, that's correct. Okay. So, and I, I see what you're saying. You know, why? Why would we approve of the funding for that now if it actually doesn't have to get done until we we approve of a design? Um, so, I, I, I see that that has merit. Um, but as for the additional workshop, that would. You know, that $500 fee, I think, would need to be approved. Certainly worth it, and certainly something that, as we showed when we designed the park, it didn't happen in one workshop. It <laughs> Knowing Brisbane, it'll... It took fall. many to get Absolutely. consensus, and I think people were really happy that that, that can consensus was taken when they finally saw the... and waited sure. for the final project. Sure. Um, and... So just you now I've been thinking about this a lot in the last you know week or so since we, we got the agenda. And I actually took the time to go out to Pacifica to look at their skate park um, last week. Just I happened to be there and 
I, I had heard they had a skate park. So I went there and I sat there and I, I watched the skaters for a while and, and there was actually a, a father there with his four-year-old daughter, both on one skateboard and he was, <laughs> he was actually teaching her how to skate. She had, you know, the full gear on and, and I had a chance to talk with him afterwards and he said she'd been practicing for about a year and it's really helped her surfing skills there in Pacifica. <laughs> but not only that, but it's helped her, her self-confidence and, and I thought it was really, you know, a special moment um, to see that, that, that up there. So, you know, when I, and I, I took the time to also um, to look at the website for Spawn Ranch and look at all their designs in addition to what we have here and I was, I was very impressed. You know, when I looked at, when I think about what we have as a skate park now, you know, I didn't really know what it meant to renovate a skate park until I saw what could be done, what, what the potential was. And when I saw those pictures um, and I read more on the website about, you know, how it really does build community um, and how it can be used for more than just the skaters, but really, you know, a place for the entire community to be proud of and to increase economic development. You know, it really, it really um, impacted the way I thought about it. And I, so I think that, you know, I, I, I really applaud the people who came up here and um, I think improving the skateboard car park could certainly be an improvement for the entire community um, and would bring skaters from outside, which, you know, could help the businesses if they stop in for lunch. Um, and apparently skaters travel far and wide to find a good skate park from, from what I read online. Um, the concern, the one concern I did have with safety was that when I went to Pacifica, none of the teenage boys had helmets on. And I read, actually I read the Yelp reviews and it said, the police regularly patrol and give out tickets. But I saw four teenage boys without any helmets or knee or elbow pads. So it made me a little concerned. So, you know, we would certainly need to make sure that we have um, a way to enforce that, you know, giving out tickets or, you know, something that's effective as in Pacifica, I'm not so sure it is. Um, it doesn't mean it can't be done, but, you know, we want to make sure that our youth are, and the people that are using it do get protected because it, you can get injured. Um, and what I liked about Swan Ranch was that, you know, they talked about how you can incorporate a lot of the the local traditions and you really make this skate park your own and it, you'd look at skater preferences in the workshops. Um, they showed some pictures of a skate park down in Southern California with these like this a wave like um, concrete board and then there was a backdrop of the mountains and I thought how cool would that be if we had you know some waves that mirrored San Bruno Mountain and then in another one they actually had a mural behind it and I thought well if it's in the current location, how cool would it be if we had a mural of the Man San Bruno Mountain and then the skate park mirroring that, you know, and, you know, they had one in Colorado bringing in boulders, you know, we could think about rocks from San Bruno Mountain, there, you know, the possibilities are endless, but I thought, you know, th this could really be a great way to highlight the community just like our playground is right now. Um, and in terms of fundraising, you know, Spawn Ranch had a lot of um, good materials. I think um, actually David Primer had sent a document to the, to the Mothers of Brisbane, and I took a look at that, and I think it's on their web website, on Spawn Ranch's website, and it has a huge plan of how you can fundraise and make it um, a lot less expensive, and, you know, by using in-kind donations, like asking for lumber and steel rebar and concrete and even you happen to know a crane supply company um, and selling bricks like we sold stars at the, at the community park playground. Um, and I think that if we can fundraise and raise the funds to replace as much of the city funds that would go towards this, I think it would go a long way towards, um, you know, making the whole community feel like it's something that they can support. Um, and, you know, I would I would encourage us to use fundraising as much as possible. Even if we approve of you know the fourteen thousand dollars, we could still ask the community you know through the mob and and wider to go out there and fundraise, and we can we can try and recoup those costs. Um, 
you know, they, they did a great job with the playground. That's why we have $7,000 left over. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we could probably do something like that here. Um, and as for location, Spawn Ranch also had um, some really good information about how to find a site for a skate park. And um, it talked about, you know, you want to be visible, like some of the speakers mentioned. You want to be close to where, you know, parents and the police can keep an eye on what's going on and make sure the kids are, you know, doing the right thing. Um, so we definitely want to keep that in mind. Um, you know, the, the design cost, it lays out the different dimensions of the possibilities for the current site. Um, so it, it's sort of, it's a little problematic because, you know, what if we then go to another site? Um, so I'm not quite sure how to, how to deal with that, but I, I think that, you know, moving forward with this would be a, a good first step. And I, I see that there's a lot of people in the community who are in favor of it. Um, and, you know, and I, and I understand there's also concerns about making sure that we, we, we've budgeted for it. And that's why I think the fundraising is really going to be key. Uh, so I'm, I'm really excited about it, and I look forward to working on it. Thank you, Lori. Um, of course, I support this, you know, uh, uh, but before we kind of move forward, I, I just want to address some of the stuff about the teen center. Um, teen center, actually, actually, I initiated that 21 years ago, so long before any of these guys were born. And first time I was mayor in 1997 is when we commissioned the teen center. And... So that was over 17 years ago. So it was real painful for me to take the suggestion to close it because uh, it was something that I always felt was needed in town. We never really had one. But times changed. Things changed. The kids changed. This is a new generation. And we're not the only city. It's not just Brisbane. This is all the cities. I mean, Foster City built a brand-new teen center, and they <coughs> found it there. <coughs> attendance just waned <clears throat> so it's a, a new generation of kids and and we have to recognize that and had to change with times you know and uh 20 years from now kids might say we want a teen center you know i mean it's just you know that's just the way it is is the community is dynamic and so you know we just really have to go with that and, and serve our constituents on what the needs are and i can certainly see that um, this little park that uh Joel Diaz sitting in the back had suggested a number of years ago is is really kind of taken off and uh, you know to a point that uh, we have to address it <laughs> to to build a new one because it's it's served its life but kids want to skate and that's that's real obvious and Mike wants to skate too so <laughs> that's real obvious. <laughs> come up to the microphone. <clears throat> I know the public comment is over, but um, I wanted to make a suggestion. I've heard a lot that the skate park is um, kind of a little dangerous. There's um, nails that are coming out. Um, I wanted to know if uh, we could move forward on uh, maybe getting citizens and, and, and um, you know, to to get together to might maybe um, shore up the skateboard park while it's still being used while we're trying to set up a... Okay, let me address it. Okay. All right. Stuart, that's how, that's how I address it. Stuart. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. Can you, can you repeat the question? I apologize. No, it had <clears throat> that the skate park is, is dangerous, and can we do something to kind of address that? Oh, on it? <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, we are actually working on that. I know the Public Works Department, and I probably should turn it over to them. We have an agreement uh, with one of the local contractors in town to uh, check it out and to do fixes, but that's under the Public Works. So I'm just going to pass the question down the aisle. Uh, we keep moving it down the line. Like a hot potato. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. We're doing at least bi-monthly inspections, and there were some nails that had come loose, and we are checking the um, half pipe and the railing and the site at least every two months, and, and those complaints have diminished, if not gone away, since they came to our attention. 
Okay. Um, I'm going to bring this back to council now. So I actually heard everybody, but I, I also heard the unanimous consensus, if I've heard right, uh, to move forward was $14,000. I would make that. 14500 14. Okay. okay. If we want to include an additional workshop. Uh, Terry, you're making the motion to approve this? And At 14500 yes. Okay. And do I have a second? Uh, uh, just so uh, where we take... We decided where we're going to take the money. Do we need to make that in the motion? I mean, my understanding, listening to everybody, is that we would do the seven thousand dollars out of the rec recreation facilities fund, and then the other seventy five hundred would come out of the thirteen fourteen teen activities budget. Okay, I'll but, second. But would we be spending that this year? Or no. So I mean, it's just like any of the other projects, like the history book and the general plan. It's budgeted this year. We've got a contract this year. We'll encumber it. And it'll, it will not go into fund balance. It will become a, it's going to be rolled over. So it will not hit the general fund reserve at the end of the year. And, but it will be available for use for next year because we haven't spent it this year. And, and how is that better than putting in next year's budget? It's, it's, it's in reality, six of one, half dozen, dozen of another. It has the same ex exact impact. Either the 7,500 is going to fall into fund balance this year, you're going to budget it next year, we'll take an additional 7,500 out of next year's fund balance, or it never touches fund balance this year, and we'll spend it next year. It does the same thing. It's, okay. I mean, it's council pleasure, but that's kind of what I was hearing when people were saying that there was money available in this year's teen activities budget for something like this. So I figured that's what the city council was looking to do. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, we have a motion, I Terry, second. second by Cliff. Mm -hmm. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, done. <laughs> okay, that brings us uh, to the consent calendar. I know one uh, citizen asks that we remove <coughs> item D. Does anybody else wish to remove anything? Item A. Good night, kids. Item, item A. And I'm sorry, you said B was removed? No, D, D is in dog. David, and, okay. David, okay. And A for the minutes. A, A for the minutes. Anybody want to remove anything else? A. Not all entertain uh, a motion. Wait a minute. Um, don't we need to remove uh, the one dealing with Kinder Morgan? Um, yes. Because you want to make a change to that, right? Correct. Yeah. Right. Right. So that would be item... That's G. G, right? G. Yeah. G. Okay. So G... G, D, and A. G, D, and A. Okay. okay. So I'd entertain a motion for B, which is adopt the following... Preliminary approval of engineer report for that for landscape and lighting. Uh, Co-sponsorship for San Bruno Mountain Watch fundraising, item C. Uh, item D is uh, extension of South San Francisco uh, scavenger franchise agreement. Item F is uh, resolution number 2014-19, authorizing mayor to sign a letter urging CalPERS to divest from publicly traded fossil fuel companies. Item H is monthly investment report. And item I is uh, approval of a group of resolutions updating existing job classifications and add new job classifications. Okay. So moved. All right. Do I have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, item A, Lori. Okay. So it looks like actually this has been amended. I had sent an email to um, Clay regarding um, number 15 on, this is on the. Um, what page? Okay. So. So, actually, let me go back to the minutes. Oh, that would be on the uh, council goal setting? So, yep. yeah. the 325 minutes? Yes. Right. So, we received the amended attachment on, on the dais, and this was under 15 Public Arts Ordinance. It's on page, well, it's, it's page two of the changes made to the council goal setting work plan, which is the attachment to the minutes. Mm -hmm. um, I had just suggested that we add in the step that was taken for, whereby it was referred to the Public Arts Subcommittee, which reviewed the draft ordinance right. and referred it to the Planning Commission. Okay. Um, and that's highlighted on our amended minutes. And then I did have one other change. I, I didn't get a chance to um, 
mention it to Clay, but under 16, um, 2014 objectives for economic development, um, when it talks about meet with Brisbane Village Shopping Center, I, I would just add regarding short-term leasing efforts to clarify or describe what, what we discussed at the goal setting workshop. Okay. Is that it? Yes. You want to make a motion to approve as amended? So moved. Second. A motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Item D. And that's uh, the, this is basically receiving the current draft sustainability action plan for the Baylands. And uh, Dana, you had some questions on this. So you want to come forward? Thank you, Mr. Mayor and Council Members. <clears throat> How many, have you guys read this? Yes. Um, Ray and Cliff drafted it along with um, a member of the Open Space and Ecology and a member of Parks and Rec and a member of the Planning Commission okay. along with staff. Yeah. Um, so my question is, where is the public process. I hear you've had a little staff meeting and maybe called somebody from a committee to give some input. Where is the public process of this? Where is the Planning Commission's comments about this? Where are uh, Open Space and Ecology Committee it, Commission? It's not an approval. This is just giving, showing. So, Mr. Mayor, excuse me, I've lived in Brisbane long enough to know that when you receive a draft document, all of a sudden it becomes law, and you don't give the public any opportunity to weigh in on these draft documents that then become law. And I will give the stormwater and the wastewater treatment plans for this town as an example. You are now using documents that have not had the full use of the public. Okay, Dan, hold, okay. hold on one second. Let, for budget questions. items. Hold on one second. Somebody want to? Uh, sure. So the process that we took forward for this was the the sustainability sub the sustainability committee worked on the first couple of things, which was the context. I can't you know off the top of my head I can't remember all the three summary. aspects. The summary side that went to all the committees. That did go to the planning commission. It did go to the sustainability uh, open space and ecology committee and it did go to the Parks and Recreation Commission for a comment. It then came back to the City Council in a public meeting for a comment. They're now working on the next phase of it. That's and the problem, the next on, phase of this. And after, after the City Council looks at it initially, you know, the, the anticipation is that it will go back through the Open Space and Ecology Committee, it will go back to the Planning Commission, it will go back to the Parks and Recreation Commission for comments and then come back to the City Council. City Council would then take those comments and send it back to the Sustainability Committee. This is a very iter iterative process that we've gone through every step of the way trying to have it go to Council for the initial look in a public meeting, then have the Council, after, the, after they've had any comments, ask them to you know, make comments to the Sustainability Committee. Sustainability Committee then works with their constituent committees to have those review it as well. So it will be reviewed by those committees after the City Council makes any comments, the sustainability co finishes up this aspect, then this aspect would go back to those, sub com to those committees and commissions. And that's the process that we've gone through for the first part of it. That's the process we're going to go through for this part of it. And then there is a third part, which is actually after you do the performance indicators, you would then go back through an action plan, and it would still be the same process where the Sustainability Committee would draft the action plan, come to the City Council for the initial look at, go back to the Sustainability Committee for any comments that Council had, go back to then bring it out to the other committees and commissions, and then come back to the City Council for that final approval. So there's still a number of steps that the Council is going to see this at, and a number of steps that the other committee, committees and commissions will see this at. Okay. The staff report states that it was written by the developer. 
and I believe it, it does. Wow. And I believe that the city needs independent review, and it needs to be something city wide, not just for the Baylands. When we went through the uh, approvals of two major developments out on Sierra Point, the Planning Commission was, you know, as they say, fit to be tied that we don't have sustainability goals for the town as a whole and su sustainability um, regulations that require it of all development, not just the Baylands. The problem I have with this document is that it says that this particular method is really not measurable. And um, that was on page four, t toward the progress toward sustainability. It speaks of off-site transfers, trades, and deals that may not change the impacts here because we may be unsustainable here, but we've agreed to another country in another part of the world to maybe purchase an inch of land so that we could say that we're doing sustainability goals. And that's the cap and trade kind of mentality that just doesn't work in a small community. Um, it should not be accepted because there's all language all over it about cogeneration and biomass, which I will rephrase that language. The cogeneration is a toxic waste burner. Anything that attempts to burn the plastics and, and um, now you want to also approve a lot of people, you'd better really think about what's in this document. Um, the plan ignores the potential of rail use as being a sustainable. So why would you go forward with something that hasn't been approved that doesn't look at all the potential for sustainability? I don't get it. You just admitted now you're going to start moving on to the implementation of something that may not be adequate. Um, there's a mention about a lower carbon use on the um, transportation. Why not electric only? I'm sorry. Some, you know, just the language in here is going to be the same experience we had on the Northeast Ridge where the, our city attorney says, oh, well, that wasn't enforceable. We never were going to um, require frog ponds on the Northeast Ridge, although it had been promised. Um, it, this document speaks as the ecology expansion as being a fait accompli. Do we really know what it is? Have we seen the environmental impact report for that? But you're going to go forward setting up the sustainability um, um, implementation on um, things for which we're not even, may not even take place out there. Um, there aren't performance indicators for zero waste. Um, you know, Dana, there's still time to like to submit written comments. All this is all this is, is we're just receiving it. We're not. You know. So what, what happened last it time needs was, to be done for the town as a whole, and it needs to be something that makes the, the Brisbane a safer place in the future. Not put out there that you want to start another toxic burner. I'm. That's what's in this document. Yes, it's receive also, it and it's ignore also it. It's also addressed in there. Come Thank on. you. I mean, what, what happened last time was after the city council <coughs> looked at it and went to the public. If I'm not, if I remember correct, correctly, and Cliff and Ray can maybe remember better than I can, we did receive some written comments from Dana, and those comments were incorporated in this. We did a couple right. of pages worth. Right. So I mean, we are we are doing this. In you know my perspective, a very public and open fashion, with a lot of opportunities for the public to provide comments. If you know if you'd like to provide more written comments, the sustainability committee would go through them just and incorporate those into into the comments into the draft, just like they did on the previous comments. I'm sure. Okay, go ahead, Rick. <laughs> I, I just wanted to to say that <coughs> our developing these sustainability 
principles and ultimately sustainability plan for helping the planning of the Baylands. That's the point of this endeavor. Uh, having something for the entire community is a very good idea and that this effort I hope will inform that but what this is intended to be is a is a guidance a set of guidance for the planning process for the Baylands and there are five uh, components and three of which uh, as uh, the administrative services director pointed out we're actually vetted through all the different committees and commissions and public and, and, and Dana you yourself contributed to that and then the committee uh, changed the language uh, in response to all of those efforts and now we're doing the fourth and the fifth stage and so all what is happening tonight is we're bringing to the attention of the council and the public um, okay this is what we've written so far for the fourth stage but we haven't finished yet uh, there's the fifth stage which is the actual how you're going to you know measure all this how you're going to indicate whether people developers building owners people uh, you know driving and taking transit and so forth you know, are they doing all these things and we need some kind of measurement for that and that's that's the next stage and once we draft that uh, then that'll come back to the council it will go to open space and ecology it will go to the planning commission it will go to the park and recreation commission and go to the world so to speak and then we will take all of those uh, comments and suggestions and it's the committee that ultimately has the authority for the the content in this document and if we've you know messed up in something like the bio generation then then we'll fix it you know <laughs> uh, we haven't nothing's been improved yet we still got a ways to go and we want to work on it to get it the best possible guidance that we can and all suggestions will be very helpful but we are we're not uh, to the point of a final document by any means yet and so I just wanted to say that the, the language really ultimately is approved by the committee we do have a consultant uh, but it's it's the committee that's composing the language and writing it and and, and not uh, the consultant and the consultant is not the developer the consultant happens the payment of that happens to be reimbursed by the developer but the consultant is working for the city not for the developer and so I want to make that clear too it's it's the, it's the committee that is composed of two council members uh, representative uh, Glenn Fieldman from open space and ecology uh, Renee Marbian who was here earlier from Park and Rec and Dave Reinhardt from the Planning Commission uh, and uh, then we have uh, staff uh, what used to be uh, mostly uh, Stuart uh, Schillinger but now uh, John since he's sort of doing other things these days John Sawicki has moved into that role and of course the city manager has been deeply involved uh, throughout so uh, this is a effort we're making to provide the, the best guidance we can for sustainability for the Baylands planning uh, and we will appreciate all kinds of feedback and it, it's not going to be approved for quite a while in fact we haven't as I said we still got the fifth part we haven't even written yet so there's a lot more to do and and all input will be appreciated okay you got anything to add to that Cliff oh. no Ray said it all I think uh, <laughs> it's a work in progress mm -hmm. right but it's a collaborative effort with the community I share some of Dana's uh, Michelle Salmon I share some of Dana's concerns and as part of the open space and ecology committee we haven't reviewed this it's been the subcommittee which has been Glenn Feldman so I actually haven't read this document I know we, we made reviewed the first three parts pardon you reviewed the first three parts and commented on them yeah. yeah in in the draft EIR process no no in this document this document the whole committee yeah oh, yes when I don't Can't know about exactly when back. but you did it's probably a year and a half maybe yeah. two years ago at this point it was probably before I was sitting on the committee because I don't really remember doing that except very peripherally ex other than during yeah, no, the whole well, committee, we the whole got a committee whole bunch of pick pages of comments. It was extensive, right. the, the comments. So right. maybe you weren't on there. Uh, yeah, but, I don't think but I was. Still, though, the, the Open Space and Ecology Committee yeah. did review it and oh, yeah. gave extensive because, you know, comments it's been, for us. It's been a while. We've been it's doing been, this for oh, years. Yes, it's well, been quite on. a while. Maybe, so I just want to make uh, sure that. Yeah. Maybe you can find out when it yeah. was. Yeah, I could. I mean, what it was is, if you remember correctly, 
Ray was the Open Space and Ecology yes. Committee member, and then when Ray stepped uh, went to council, um, that was it was in that time period right as Ray was coming on to council and Terry was on coming on to council that we put it out to the committee. So you may not have been on it, no. but I will tell you. I mean, you know, it was Glenn was on it. Um, on, um, Anjana was on it, and I mean, there was Mary. four yeah. or five yeah. pages. Oh, yeah, the, the Open Space and Ecology Committee had by far the most comments right. to make. I'm sure, they always do. I'm sure that they did, but I just want to say that was over two years ago. And before, That's true. Before we've gone through the draft DIR. That's correct. That's correct. So I just want to make that really clear. That's correct. Okay, the action item is just to it's just acknowledge that we're receiving it. So, somebody want to make that motion? Yep, so moved. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Item G, consider resolution number 2014-20. And uh, there's some suggested um, language change. Mayor and Council, good evening. This is the implementation resolution for the uh, liquid storage business license tax that was adopted by the voters at the, the last election. Uh, there is a resolution before you that provides for the implementation for 2014 only. Uh, there was a letter that was received by the council in the city this morning, which is a part of the record. That letter was a subject of a, a prior closed session discussion. And at this time, the recommendation would be that the council proceed with the implementation resolution, however, with a modification that the due date for the payment, rather than June 30th, 2014, be extended to December 31st, 2014, uh, to allow some further discussions regarding the implementation of the ordinance. Okay, and that would be um, an Item number three, payment of business license tax. That's where you would put that uh, under a resolution. Let me give me one second. Th that's correct. It would be item number three. So it would be just one change in the, the resolution. Uh, it would say payment of the business license tax for liquid storage facilities is due in full on or before December 31st, 2014. Okay. All right. I agree with that change. I'll make a motion to move forward uh, with the resolution with the date change of December 31st. Okay. I'll second. A motion and a second. Further discussion, Ray? Yeah. I, I just want to indicate um, that I certainly am in favor of a taxing process of the liquid storage and of course, that mostly affects the Kinder Morgan tank farm. Um, but I think we're under some <coughs> clear litigation danger. And it's my sense of strategy that if we waited a couple of months and tried to do some further negotiation and make certain kinds of proposals, that we might be able to at least have a higher chance of avoiding litigation. So because of my concern of litigation and my belief that we would be better off holding off a little before we do the implementation, I plan to vote no. Okay. A motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? No. All right. Four to one. All right, let's move on to uh, public hearing. Item A, which is uh, open public hearing to hear any objections by noticed property owners of properties on which uh, a nuisance has been declared to exist within the Brisbane Weed Abatement Program. Um, staff report, <coughs> Chief Deputy Chief Johnson. Good evening, Mayor, uh, City Council members. Uh, as Mayor stated, um, this is an opportunity to have public comment and public hearing on any uh, protest to our program. As you're aware, uh, the Council passed uh, ordinance in 2009 creating a weed abatement uh, program. Uh, attached to this is a schedule to which we adhere to as far as inspecting, noticing, etc., uh, the different properties. Um, 
we have gone through that as of May, uh, May tw 30th. There were 20 properties that received notices to abate. As of this last Monday, there were only five remaining, and of those five, we're working to gain, res uh, 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 gain uh, adherence to the uh, policies. We fully expect that to occur. <coughs> and at this time, uh, we have always encouraged people who have issues or have problems to contact us, and we have been working diligently with them to uh, mitigate and resolve any concerns they may have. Uh, so I would recommend that uh, the council open public hearing, uh, hear any objections, uh, close the public hearing, and either uh, sustain or overrule, and then again to uh, direct the enforcing officer to proceed with any properties that are not in compliance. Okay. Any council questions before we open the public hearing? No? Okay. Uh, public hearing is now open. Does the member of the public wish to speak on this? <laughs> okay, not seeing any takers. I entertain a motion to close the public hearing. Make the motion. Do I have a second? Second. Okay, motion and second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right, public hearing is now closed. Uh, council discussion or pleasure? Also wish to yeah. approve it. Yeah, I, I wish to approve. Even though I, I, I'm one of those folks that got a notice. <laughs> yeah, so, uh, I'm going to be doing some weed whack in the uh, this weekend, so it'll be done. <laughs> so. All right. gun and I didn't so. this year. <laughs> okay, does that mean it's a second? No, I'll second it. Okay, a motion to second. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? <clears throat> okay. Item B, which is consider adoption, uh, this is under public hearing. Item B, which is consider adoption of resolution number 2014-16, adopting a master fee schedule. Staff report, please. Sure. Uh, every year you go through and update the fees. We update them based on inflation. This year the inflation rate was 2.1%, so you did an across-the-board increase of 2.1%. There are, uh, Especially when you get into the parks and recreation fees, and some of the lower fees, we don't actually increase it every year because if we got a $20 fee, a 2.1% increase would be 41 cents or 40, yeah, 42 cents. And since that's not a, a dollar amount, we don't raise it because we're not going to charge change to people. Uh, so there are some fees that don't look like they get changed, but we keep that formula in, base, in place. So as the inflation catches up, we will increase those fees. We also have a fee for the, tr we've increased the truck haul fee separately. We're going from 26 cents per cubic foot to 45 cents per cubic foot. And we also additionally are adding a 1% late fee for the truck haul fees that are more than 60 days late. And just to let you know that there, I would like to have one change, a couple of changes made to it. Uh, the police chief did send me a, an email earlier in the budget year and I just did not get a chance to update it in the fee schedule. But for fee number, for fee P17, we would like to change the title to massage certificate of registration, and that would be $100. And for P018, we would like to call it the massage certificate of registration yearly renewal at $25. So I, I think that's probably also in connection with what you're doing with the massage ordinance going forward. So if we can, if you can make, as you make your motion, if you can include changing P.O. Where, where are these numbers you're pulling out? To the left. Okay. Right. This okay. Is, you want to call it P.O. something, right? Right. I mean, police is... 17. Yeah, P, uh, P.O. would be police 17, and P.O. would be police 18. And the 17 would be the massage certificate of registration for $100, and then the massage certificate of registration yearly renewal would be $25. So is that in addition to the business license fee that they would have to pay? No, that would be the business license fee that they would be paying. So that changes the numbers that are there now? Yes. Right? Yes. And these are uh, the same fees that have been prior or this? 
Now this is the this is the recommendation of the police chief based on the new massage ordinance. And so what were the fees in 1314? There were none? They were not called this. They were called, called a massage fee and a massage technician permit fee is what they were called previously. Um, but because you're changing the way the massage ordinance reads, she is, uh, the police chief is looking to change the name of the, of the fees and also what it would cost us to do the work for them. So it's not an increase in the fee? No. Do you have a question? Oh, you know what? Hold, hold on a second, Carolyn, because it, it'll be part of the public hearing. We, we haven't opened it yet, so. Did it answer your question? Well, it answers my question on what he was asking us to add in. I just wanted to find it there. Okay, you got other questions? Um, on the truck haul permit fee, I see that it's a more substantial amount than the normal uh, increase in fees over last year. Yes. Is there a reason for that? Going from the 26 cents to the 45 cents? Yes. Um, I'm like going to look to Clay. 73% increase? Um, I would say that the um, operator is aware of this. Um, and uh, I think this reflects <clears throat> the increased activity out there and also the fact that historically, or many years ago, that activity out there was a lot of small operators, and now you have major projects that are um, removing uh, material to that site. Um, so the, um, I guess the market for the, the fee is um, more appropriate with the, with the types of uh, vendors that are coming in there at this point. Um, it is a revenue of the city that won't be here forever, um, but for the time being, it seems that the, the marketplace can uh, easily handle this, um, well, I won't say easily handle, that you can handle this fee, and I think it's something we'll want to monitor on an annual basis. Um, but they are aware of it. Um, frankly, they were more concerned about the late fee than they were about the uh, increase in the rate. That would be appropriate. Um, I have some comments, but I think I'd rather address them in the in the budget than on the fee schedule. So that's okay. Cliff, you have it. I, I do. So, uh, and it's also related to the truck haul fees. So, um, are they current right now, Clay? That's Stuart where we're at. I'm looking to Betsy because she knows more than I do. You're going to have to parrot it because I can't hear So they are paid up through December of 2013. So they are not quite as current as we would like them to be, but they're more current than they have been in the past. Okay. So All right. Just so that you understand that, though, we, we, we build them in two-month increments. Right. And then we build them basically 30 days after the end of that second month, so we <laughs> build in March. <coughs> or January, February. So they're basically delinquent, I guess, at this point from March to to, uh, to June. Okay. All right. And then, um, let's see. Okay. Yeah. No, that, that was it. So thank you for that. Hey, Ray? Any questions? Uh, yeah, I want to come back to the hauling fees. Um, is this for both import and export? Correct. Okay. Um, do we have a sense of whether this might affect decisions for purchasing soils for export? Uh, this the level of uh, increase in hauling fee? Um, you see my, where I'm going? Yeah, I, I, I see that you, we don't want to inadvertently create a disincentive for removal of the, of, exactly. of the, of the dirt. Exactly. Um, you know, I will tell you that, that the conversations I've had with them, you know, the, the 
raising of the fee to the 45 cents is, is doesn't seem to be an, a, um, an issue that they think is going to impact their business model. Um, again, they're, they're, they were more concerned about the, uh, the late payment. Um, and it was more because of their billing process. Um, but I think they're just, you know, we, I indicated to them that, uh, um, unfortunately, um, you know, the sense on the city's part was that we were kind of the last to be paid. Um, we don't have an out payment on this as such as we do when, like with the EIR and some other stuff where we're actually paying somebody else. So this is just a fee into the city. Um, but that notwithstanding, I think we have to have some incentive in the system um, for them to pay and to pay in a timely fashion. Okay. One other? Yeah. Uh -huh. um, this is a, an old issue that we've talked about many times before, but it keeps coming up, and it's in the public works, and I know that Cliff brought it up before, too. And that's the public works grading mm. fees. Um, and then a member of the public mentioned it a couple of meetings ago. Uh, and that's this uh, incredible yeah. jump from uh, if you do 50 to 100, it's, you know, 664. If you go just over 100, all of a sudden it's 11,000 so forth and so on, which seems like, a, you know, an incredible jump if you just happen to go a little bit over 100. Uh, I know there's been some talk, well, we can be, you know, lenient or what have you, but it still seems like uh, an incredible leap from, from 100 to 101. And I'm just wondering if we could somehow rather massage that so it doesn't look so, so much like, uh, you know, a confiscatory leap of, of, of fee situation. Uh, it, it, it doesn't seem, it doesn't look right. Well, sir, I think the reason it doesn't look right is that the presumption that people have made when they come and talk to the council is that it's a linear approach, mm -hmm. that it's a linear cost for the city to go out and do the inspection. And that's not the fact. These um, costs were evaluated. It's been over a decade ago. We did, t we did a time resource analysis of how much time staff spends on projects of different sizes. And, qu and quite frankly, it is a small project in that size that we spend way more time on than other projects because they tend to be done by less experienced, smaller contractors, oftentimes ho homeowners trying to do the work themselves, and we spend a bunch of time out there. Now, having said that, and, and I haven't had a chance to discuss it with Stuart Clay, because that one item looks odd, I wouldn't have an objection at all to having that set up as a force account amount. So in other words, we would draw it down, and if that's and if we expend it all, then we expend it all, and if we don't, we don't, uh, because what we're trying to do, the guidance we've received from previous councils is to have full cost recovery for the work that we do, so I'm just kind of stuck between that. Right. Um, and and the, I mean, the very clear observation that people are making is that it's not a linear jump from one right. to the other. It's geometric, right. and it's based on actual experience. But if that would satisfy the council's desire, I, and I don't think that would be difficult for us to do, but I'll look at Stu for that. No, I mean, if you look at it, the you know, as you go higher up, it's actual cost with a force of count with a minimum of ten thousand dollars. I mean, if the city council would like to, you know, change the uh, hundred to a thousand cubic yards as a force account with a minimum of five thousand dollars something like that that might you know you can do that at this point in time because because clearly even people who are pretty smart look at this and and they get you know the wrong idea and it makes us look as if we're engaging in some right. kind of confiscatory action right. which we aren't no. but it looks that way and so <laughs> I'm trying to figure out, and I think that suggestion maybe would help in that direction. Right. So maybe what you do is for, you know, the ones from uh, 100 to 1,000 to be a force account with maybe $5,000, minimum 5,000, and then the 1,000 to the 10,000 um, actual co cost account, actual cost with a force account of a minimum of $7,500. And, 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 you know, and I fully understand where Randy's coming from. If you look at the utility billing late fees 
our first bill is, you know, your first notice is $5, your next notice is $40, because by the time we get to the next notice, there is a lot more work than just the same work repeated. It's because we're dealing with a lot more people who we spend a lot more time with. So I understand what Randy's saying, but you can do something like that. We do a 5,000 and a 7,500 um, minimum for, with a, as a force account. Okay. On that note, would that mean that on these grading permits and inspection fees, you'd be spending more time record keeping, and so that would make your costs go up? Right. I mean, if you're going to ask us to track the cost, you know, for um, how much time somebody spends working on it, part of that cost of spending time working on an account is tracking their time working on the account. And so in the same vein, if we've done a study and it runs eleven to $12,000 to do that permit, wouldn't we want that force account to be um, in that dollar amount so that we aren't ending up being owed down the road? Uh, we, we could, and I think, uh, I mean, what I was hearing was Council Member Miller's, um, you know, concern that you were just, you know, we're asking for a large jump from, you know, six hundred dollars to, to ten thousand dollars. I think that would be what I was hearing the concern from, you know, Council Member Miller. But I mean, it would make, from a city financial perspective, you know, it would make most sense to do the same thing you do with all of them: have a minimum of ten thousand. And, you know, there will be some that will be under, there will be some that will be over, and, you know, and some will return and some will ask for more money as we need more money. It's just a matter of how, you know, what makes the council the most comfortable when it's looking at this chart? Because the cost of doing the work will be the cost of doing the work. Mm -hmm. That addressed your concern, Ray, <clears throat> to... Well, uh, <clears throat> I mean, I, I don't want to do something uh, responding to Council Member O'Connell's that, that increases costs, uh, you know, unreasonably. Um, but on the other hand, uh, I think, you know, the, the fee schedule, I know I've heard this from a lot of contractors, you know, and, and they all think that way about it. And, you know, it, 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 when it jumps like this, it's just confiscatory. I mean, it, it, it's just the way they see it. And so what I was trying to figure um, and, and Stuart was responsive to that was, you know, how can we structure this from the fee schedule that still covers that cost but doesn't make it look so odd to people who don't know all the background to how it's calculated. That's kind of what I think. And if it helps the council's consideration of this, really the parcels we are talking about are infill parcels here in town and there's about a half a dozen of them. Right. That's what's generating all of this conversation. Right. 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 And so, I mean, I understand that you know we're not talking about very much, but but this is a, a fee schedule that's out there. It looks like it's a generic thing, and so if we can, from my point of view, if we can make it look um, a little more graduated, uh, incremental, and in whatever fashion that makes it look better, you know, that's that's what I would prefer. The only way to do that is to make the little guys go up, yeah, I, I, and bring the big guys down. And that, if if it really takes that much to do the work, then yeah, I mean, if so, Randy, I just want to make it clear. And I know we've talked about this before. So, say that you know the six seventy eight. I mean, really, that's a subsidized amount. And we're just trying to keep the costs lower. Is that what you're saying for the for the little guy? But the actual time that's put into it. Uh, Staff-wise, is almost the same or close to the same as if you did, you know, going from say 75 cubic yards to 140 cubic yards. But now that we're getting to a larger project, and now we're we're showing those real real costs here. No, sir. What, what, all of these were based on full cost recovery. Okay. So the dollar amounts for the grading inspection are based on the estimates that we did. 10 years ago on how much time we were on average spending on jobs of different size. And and it may be that that there's a challenge with the split that we have where we have the breaks. I don't remember where that number came from. That The, the breaks in yardage came before Randy. So I don't know how those were determined. They were 
what we so use. what if we added another another break a, a, a one on one to 200 I don't know where that you know where well, it goes from a, a smaller project to a larger project if, if I could make a suggestion maybe and, and Stuart had already said this instead of using the actual numbers that are in there um, do what's done down below which says actual costs with a force account minimum of ten thousand dollars or, or, or sir if, if I may as an alternate perhaps the other thing we could do is leave the dollar amounts in there the way they are and for this particular break that we're talking about that seems to be causing the most concern asterisk the item and put a note that says the director of public works city engineer may take a force account in lieu of this fixed amount and then just give me that discretion right away and then we can do it and then we don't have to to play around here too much and at this time of night try and find the exact number and the exact break and let it happen and if a contractor wants to accept the force account he accepts the force account that's fine he'll he'll give us x amount of money at the end of the project we'll have an accounting of our time and what our billable rates are and we'll show him what the costs are uh, alternatively he can pay the fee amount and we're fine yeah you know, you're right that is a, a much more fair um approach and, and it is for some people sir if, if i may continue because what happens is there are contractors that work in this town and work here on a regular basis and they know the strict standards and the high standards <coughs> we hold people to and they just it, and it's not a problem it's when we have people who aren't used to those standards or have never worked here in town not used to the topography we have not used to the, the narrow and uh, constricting roads we have those are the ones that we're out there all the time on okay that sounds like a reasonable mm -hmm. solution. so we'll, we'll just make that change in there that's okay yeah. Anything else, Ray? No, that's it. Okay, Lori. <clears throat> so one thing I noticed that's not in here since it's a new facility is the uh, library park, um, if the picnic tables, and I just wanted to bring this up now. Um, if we want to have Park and Rec look into this, to um, I heard it at the ribbon cutting ceremony for the library park that um, you know maybe in the future. Um, these tables, the picnic tables, can get rented out like they do at the community park. Um, if people want to hold some, you know, some parties there or some functions. Um, but um, right now, the library park is restricted in its hours to when the library is open. So um, I had asked Clay about it, and he said that if we did want to put a fee in there, that we would if it's during off library hours that it, we would want the fee to cover the cost of a, a library attendant or library park attendant would, who would have to open and close the gate. Um, so I uh, just wanted to throw that out there. You know, it might be premature at this point since it just opened and we wanted to see how much interest there is in the park in general. Um, but if it does get popular, um, you know, it could be a, a good source of of revenue for the city and also um, you know allow people who want to use the library park um, during off library hours to do so yeah you know, I think that's a good idea there was a, um, a parent before we op before we did the ribbon cutting was asking me hey when are you gonna open up the park so I could have a, my kids uh, party there because all of the sites at our community park were, were booked so that was an alternative site um, so yeah, it'd be nice to have it open. I I would say okay, but I, I I'd like to send it to the park and rec with some recommendations because uh, there's no barbecue facilities and people may want to bring it in. So we have to have some kind of rules sure. and regulations for that. So uh, you know before we actually put it in. Right, I'm suggesting that we yeah. send it to park and rec. Yeah, and I well, and I agree that's probably okay. And, and additionally, there are neighbors in that area that will have concerns. If people think that because they're paying for it, they get to um, throw rocks, take <laughs> throw rocks. No, I, yes, you, no, you could mean, say I, that. I'm saying because Dolores has brought that to our attention many several times, times and you know we had to put signs up saying "Don't throw rocks," which well, I think got is, rid of all the rocks. So. Well, I think that's there's always something to throw. <laughs> um, all those things, man. But. He's, and, and dirt clod maybe but. I pr probably could look it up but I'm not sure what a park table goes for but after hours that certainly is something that we'd have to have there's no restrooms 
right? I mean, there's a number of considerations when you talk about those park tables. Part of it is going to be is there's conflicts with people when they rent the community center because they usually overflow in the back. So, I mean, trying to really come up with that cost, I think you'd want to, as, as Council Member Lou said, you really want to have the Parks and Recreation Commission uh, com subcommittees really take a look as to what's the best way to come up with a cost and, ha and how do you even rent it out? Because you don't want to limit people from renting the community center, which is a better facility for us to rent, and we're going to make more money on an hourly basis. But also, when you rent that out, we usually also open up the back area for them. So it's trying to, you know, it's the balancing act, and how do you, you know, and how do you do that? So I, I think, you know, it would be a perfect thing for a, one of the recreation subcommittees, especially now that Clay's the person for the Parks and Recreation Commission while I'm, I'm working in Half Moon Bay. <laughs> Lovely. Okay. Or anything else? No. That's it. Okay, this is a public hearing and so we'll open the public hearing and we have No more questions? It's been answered, okay. Entertain a motion to close the public hearing. So move. I'll second. Okay, motion is second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Council's pleasure. You know, Clark, I just have one question. Stuart, the two hundred and sixty thousand dollars um, the approximate increase if we move forward with the truck haul fees. It, uh, of course, that has not been put into your budget, correct? No, it has. So last year we would budget 500000 This year we got in the budget 750000 So we're anticipating about a 33% increase, 50% uh, increase because you're going from 26 to 45. Okay, yes. that, that is in our current budget. That is, that is currently budgeted. Okay. And then uh, in the 14 15 budget. Yes. And as a follow-up, which I was going to talk about in the budget, but as long as I'm remembering, um, since we put a limit on their height, did we account for that reduction in their truck haul fees? I, I'll turn. I'll let Clay. I see Clay's reaching for the mic. Yeah, the, the um, anticipation was that was not going to that the height limits were not going to impair the amount of activity they had for that period of time. So we don't anticipate any reduction in their anticipated activity. Okay. All right. Any further council questions? Mm -hmm. No. Council's pleasure. I move to adopt resolution 2014-16 with the amended changes in the rating fee and the massage ordinance okay. police fee. We have a second. Second. Okay, motion a second. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? All right, very good. Um, brings us uh, 1020. Got 10 minutes. No. <laughs> <laughs> Got a motion to adopt it, but no, okay. Do you want to take a break first or? Yeah, why don't we do that? Yeah, okay. Cool. If we turn the air on. Or you want to talk about a little bit of, of what we no, want we can to take do? a break first. Okay, come back. All right. I, I think we can. Let's take five and then come back and plow through this. Mm -hmm.